हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू माय लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन लाप्लेस ट्रांसफॉर्मेशंस सो इन द प्रीवियस क्लासेस सो लेट मी स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट क्लास वी हैव स्टार्टेड द लाप्लेस ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन विद मेनी थीरम्स देन फॉलोड बाय इनवर्स लाप्लेस ट्रांसफॉर्मेशंस एंड मेनी एग्जांपल्स वी हैव सीन so those are related to the previous semester in this semester we have the applications of laplace transformations so mainly to solve the differential equations how to solve the differential equation may be first order or second order by using the laplace transformations okay so this solving differential equation you have already done in your first year mathematics okay but we see here the different method by applying inverse laplace transformation we can solve the differential equations easily okay in this semester we have applications of inverse laplace transformations or simply applications of laplace transformation then followed by fourier transformations okay first week cl few classes we spend on around 10 to 15 classes an inverse laplace transformation applications then we'll move to the fourier transformation okay fine <coughs> so in this class i will revise laplace transformations main important formulas main important theorems and all those things okay fine first let me revise those things okay let us start then how we have defined the first of all laplace transformation as a laplace transformation ela defined chesam how we have defined the laplace transformations so the laplace transformation of a function the definition itself first i'll write so the definition laplace transformation of a function f of t will be is equal to 0 to infinity as an integration e power minus st s is a parameter f of t dt then after that i'll get a function f of s okay this is the laplace transformation of a function f of t so this is the class a function that is piece wise that is sectionally continuous and exponential order those things we have already known so let us rewrite all the theorems some of the important theorems related to our laplace transformations first i write the important theorems or otherwise that important formulas that is related to this so let us write the important formula so i'll make a table i'll make a table where f of t is given we need to find laplace transformation of that function f of t that we write as f of s okay fine so take the some functions the first i'll take the function itself is 1 what is the laplace transformation of the one the answer comes as 1 by s remember s is a parameter some books will take p is a parameter okay so i'm taking s is the parameter laplace transformation of 1 is 1 by s so what is the laplace transformation of t power n laplace transformation of t power n is gamma function will come gamma n plus 1 divided by s power n plus 1 so if it is an integer i can write it as n factorial by s power n plus 1 then what about exponential e power at so e power at will be 1 by s minus a if it is e power minus at it will come as 1 by s plus a then what about cos at cos of at function cos of it this is s divided by s square plus a square then i rewrite here and then i'll write the things will be here the same table the function f of t and the laplace transformation of f of t that we represent as f of s so next i'll take the sin at 
sin of a t will be a divided by s square plus a square. A divided by s square plus a square. Just we need to revise all the things. That's it. Next, go for the hyperbolic functions. Cos of h a t. Cos of h a t will be s divided by s square minus a square. Sin of h a t will be a divided by s square minus a square. Next, Bessel function of zeroth order. Bessel function of zeroth order will be one by square root of s square plus a square. Okay. And one thing is you need to remember here, Laplace transformation of f of t is equal to f of s. Then what about inverse Laplace transformation of f of s? So that means this is. Inverse Laplace transformation of f of s. Inverse Laplace. So that means is inverse Laplace transformation of 1 by s is 1. If the Laplace transformation of 1 is 1 by s, then inverse Laplace transformation of 1 by s will be 1. If the Laplace transformation of t power n is gamma of n plus 1 divided by s power n plus 1, then inverse Laplace transformation of this function will be this. If the Laplace transformation of e power a t is 1 by s minus a, then inverse Laplace transformation of s 1 by s minus a will be e power a t. Similarly, here also this is inverse Laplace transformation of f of s. inverse Laplace transformation of f of s. So, these are the minimum formulae we need to remember. So, with this and a few theorems, shifting theorem, change of scale property, convolution theorem, integration theorem, de derivative of a function theorem, we can determine the rest of the things. That theorems also we will write down. So, first you note down this, then we will go for the theorems also, because they are also important for us. Okay, fine. <coughs> So, let me erase for the theorems we need to note down here. Important theorems we will note down. See, this formula you need to remember. It is not like that case or again I will derive it. No, it will not work. We need to finally solve the given differential equation. For that at least minimum fundamental formula you need to remember. Yeah. Let us learn some theorems. Some theorems. Just like so far we have learned the formula. Now you see the theorems. So let us write the first theorem. Theorem 1. What if this theorem says? If Laplace transformation of if Laplace transformation of f of t is equal to f of s, then Laplace transformation of e power a t f of t, that is the shifting theorem, will become f of s minus a. If it is minus sign is there, then it will come f of s plus a. Then second theorem, then same thing is valid for inverse Laplace transformation also. If the inverse Laplace transformation of f of s is f of t, then inverse Laplace transformation of f of s minus a is e power a t into f of t. Okay, fine. So go for the theorem 2. What is the theorem 2 will be? If Laplace transformation of f of t is f of s, then Laplace transformation of f of a t, change of scale property, that will be is equal to 1 by a into f of s by a, 1 by a into f of s by a, okay, fine. Next theorem 3 as follows, 
see i am writing only that important theorems that is required for me not all the formulae if laplace transformation of f of t is f of s then laplace transformation of t power n f of t will become minus 1 whole power n d by ds derivative with respect to s n times f of s so another theorem 4 if laplace transformation of f of t is equal to f of s then laplace transformation of it is a division f of t by t will be is equal to s to infinity f of s ds f of s ds next theorem 5 if laplace transformation of f of t is equal to f of s then integration laplace transformation of integration from 0 to t f of u du will become f of s by s so similarly if it is inverse laplace transformation of f of s by s is equal to integration from 0 to t f of u du so if it is a s square double derivative if it is s cube three times derivatives triple integrals four it is the four times integrals okay this theorem with proof we have already done in the last semester okay <clears throat> now let's see theorem 6 if laplace transformation of f of t is equal to f of s then laplace transformation of derivative first derivative of prime t will be is equal to s into f of s minus capital f of 0 second derivative laplace transformation of second derivative will be s square into f of s minus s into f of 0 minus f prime into capital f this is the double derivative even for triple derivative also we can do it okay fine so once you know the first derivative then double derivatives will become easy then triple derivatives also can be done okay fine so i can write for the triple derivative also let's say i'll write here triple derivative laplace transformation of the function three times differentiation prime indicates the differentiation it will be s cube f of s minus s square f prime 0 minus f double prime 0 f double prime 0 okay fine so these are the formulae you need to remember for the problem solving purpose so specially these derivatives are important for us so we write for the second derivative and all those things so it is just it is a revision we are revising all the things at one place okay fine so that last theorem i'll write here the convolution theorem will write so that the last theorem i mention here is the convolution theorem i will mention okay fine these things you need to remember theorem 6 is important because we are solving the differential equations we need these things the last theorem i write
the last theorem is a convolution theorem let's say theorem 7 we call as the convolution of the two functions suppose if inverse Laplace transformation of f of s is equal to f of t and inverse Laplace transformation of g of s is equal to g of t then then inverse Laplace transformation of product of these two that is f of s g of s will be is equal to convolution of f and g 0 t f of u g of t minus u du this we call as the convolution of f with g convolution of f with g that is equal to you can write 0 to t f of t minus u g of u into du this is the way we define the convolution of the functions capital F and capital G ok so all this formula is important for us to understand this differential equations mechanism so okay, differential equations solving by Laplace transformation means you need to recollect all the information that we have learned in our previous semester otherwise it is not possible ok it is better so you go through all the important formulae and important theorems and techniques to find the inverse Laplace transformation of the given problem the given function ok fine so now we go directly solving the differential equations with the help of inverse Laplace transformation first we will take ordinary differential equations then that to be in that ordinary differential equation we take uh, another section as a, a coupled equations also then we will go to the partial differential equations then how to solve the partial differential equation after that partial differential equation we will go for the integral equations so the finding that is integral equation that means integral functions man kan kunda ok so the fine so once again I am telling you so go through all that formulas that we have learned in the last semester ok and uh, that to be small small integrations differentiations all those things are required ok fine ok fine so let me erase all these things then we will go for the solving differential equation ok see I am taking one differential equation ordinary differential equation and with the help of this Laplace transformation equations we will solve it ok when the differential equation will be as well as you note down in the form of a problem so I am taking it as a problem solve the differential equation solve the ordinary differential equation t into t square y by dt square plus dy by dt capital Y plus t into y of t will be is equal to 0 solve the ordinary differential equations under the conditions under the conditions under the conditions that y of 0 is equal to 1 and what 
y of 0 is 0 and y of t and its derivatives and its derivatives y of t and its derivatives have transformations have transforms so this is the problem we need to solve ok fine so let us see how to solve it so it's easiest problem nothing to worry so I will tell you the first of all technique then how to approach then you can solve many problems like this ok <coughs> see generally if this is the differential equation you might have solved this with the help of power series solution. Okay. Now the idea here we need to use the Laplace transformations. Let us see here I am taking Laplace y we need to take we need to solve for y the idea will be here what we will get after solving we will get y as a function of t this I will get y as a function of t. Okay. Suppose you take take Laplace transformation of y of t I am getting as small y as a function of s small y as a function of s then if I take inverse Laplace transformation I will get. So now what is the Laplace transformation of one time derivative? Laplace transformation of one time derivative. So, one time derivative will be s into y of s minus s into y of s minus y of 0. Next. But in the problem it is given y of 0 is 1 s into y of s minus 1. Then double derivative. Laplace transformation of y double derivative t will be equal to s square y of s minus s into f of sorry y of 0 minus y prime 0 derivative that means it is a derivative y prime ok. Now <coughs> then we will substitute the values which are given to us. So, what are the values which are given to us? So, here s square y of s minus y of 0 is given as 1. Now, I am taking s minus y prime 0 is not given. So, let us take assume assume y prime 0 I will get as some number maybe some lambda I will get some lambda number. So, that is lambda ok. Now, let us see what to do what I have done here n just an intervariku just achana differential equation lo function y ni ni I need to determine y. So, what I am taking take the Laplace transformation of this let us say y of a small y of s I am getting. So, somehow if I determine y of s. So, e do ki vidanga ni no small y as a function of s kankunna nan kondi. Dhani ki inverse Laplace transformation cheshte mana gao se nitu vente answer os sundi. Adhi idea main idea ok. So, if it is in ni ko if it is in yes and it is Laplace transformation nan kundra. Let us determine the Laplace transformation of that. So, let us see. I will go for the Laplace transformation of that. So, take the take Laplace transformation of given OD. It is in differential equations k in Laplace transformation this kunta. What is the first term will be? The first term will be Laplace transformation of t into y double prime t. Then next Laplace transformation of y one time y prime. Then next Laplace transformation of t into y of t will be is equal to 
zero. Okay, fine. <coughs> then what to do now? We have what is the Laplace transformation of this? So we have given the formulas already. This I can apply the formula here. What is that formula? Laplace transformation of so t power n into f of t will be is equal to minus 1 whole power n into ds whole power n into f of s. I will apply this formula here. Okay? Fine. So, here it is t power 1, t power 1, the function f of t is a, you that as it is you put like that. Differentiation of that function. Okay? Fine. Now, what I will have here? So, 1 is there, let us put here. <coughs> Laplace transformation of y double prime. Yeah. So, what is this f of s here? Laplace transformation of f of t. Laplace transformation of f of t. Okay. So, the first one is there, nothing is there means one is there. So, minus one whole power n is minus d by ds one time d by ds of Laplace transformation of y double prime. So, Laplace transformation of y double prime t. I have been first. Next first. So, y prime directly. Laplace transformation of y prime. Already ready made. Laplace transformation of y prime. Then t power 1 is there. Then again 1 substituted here. Minus. 1 that is d by ds of Laplace transformation of y of t. Laplace transformation of y of t is equal to 0. Now you substitute here. You have already so taken this. You know already this. Now I am substituting the remembering this y derivative at x t equal to 0, I am taking some constant lambda that we need to determine. Okay, fine. Now, let us put here y double prime, I am substituting there. So, if I substitute there, what I will get? So, minus d by ds of Laplace transformation, s square y of s, s square y of s minus s minus lambda then plus Laplace transformation of this that is s into y of s minus 1 then minus of d by ds of Laplace transformation of y of t that is d by ds of y of s equal to 0. Now you differentiate this. So we need to follow the product rule that is minus s square into d by ds of y of s then minus 2s into y of s minus minus will be plus 1 then lambda is a constant whose differentiation will be 0 then plus s into y of s minus 1 minus d by ds of y of s will be is equal to 0. Now you see here plus 1 is there minus 1 is there cancel. Yes y of s is there here 2s y of s is there minus will come. Then minus s square then as usual the terms will be like that. Then what we do here yeah let us add this side. Let us arrange this side. Now rearrange the terms. So what is here left finally? Minus 1, minus 1 cancel. It is minus s. Y of s is remaining. Then minus s square. Then minus. That is I can take minus d by ds of y of s common. Then I have s square plus 1. 
will be is equal to 0. Now rearrange the terms here. You take the minus that side. Then rearrange in the terms. So <coughs> what I have, I will have finally. So S into Y of S plus dys by ds into s square plus 1 will be is equal to 0. Now I can write this will be like this. Multiply with ds and divide it by y. So I <coughs> will have s divided by s square plus 1 into ds plus d y by y as a function of s will be is equal to 0. Now again if you want you can do the same thing you will get by ds by ds you will get this term. If I divide with s square plus 1 s square plus 1 I will get the same thing. Okay. So integrate both sides it is simply variable separable technique. Variable separable way of solving differential equation variable separable way. So second order differential equation we have converted into first order differential equation. So when we integrate here s divided by s square plus 1 is there if I differentiate this 2s will come that means better you put 2 here and 2 here. Okay. Then answer will come as if I integrate this, if I integrate this, integrate, integrate, then answer will come as 1 by 2 into ln of s square plus 1 plus ln y as a function of s is equal to some ln constant say integration constant. C is the integration constant that need to be determined, that need to be determined. But with the condition is also there that we can do later. Okay. Now <coughs> what can we do here? We will simplify that is it. More and more we need to simplify. More and more we need to simplify. Yeah, let us simplify more and more here. Yeah. So, <coughs> this can be written as we can <coughs> written this entire thing will be. So, let us say this line can be expressed as log of s square plus 1 plus log of y square as a function of s is equal to log c let us say that 2 is absorbed inside itself let us maybe some log c1 is a new constant. So, this can be written as log of y square into s square plus 1 is equal to log of some constant. So, from here y square s square plus 1 will be is equal to constant. Okay. So, that constant also can be determined. So, how to determine that constant will be here? Yeah. <coughs> so, from here, so let us put that constant will be some c like this. Let us put that constant will be some c like this. <coughs> or rather, do one thing. So, we will take some another manner. Let us see here, here itself. So, that is integration constant. That is integration constant. I will take some C will be the integration constant. 
C will be the integration constant. So from here, this 1 by 2 can go here, this 1 by 2 can go there, or otherwise it can go there, anywhere. So, you take that as log of s square plus 1 plus log of y square will be is equal to some constant c, that is the constant c I am taking. Then this will be log of y square into s square plus 1 into that constant I am taking. Okay. So, what can be the, the constant? Let us leave like that only. It will be a constant. It is better in the previous technique. Let us see like log c I am taking. So, with that this is a log c. At least we are free from the logs. Log c I am taking. <coughs> this entire thing will be. So, from here we will get the 2 log c. So, that is c square. So, from here I will have y square into s square plus 1 will be is equal to log of c square that is c square. So, from here y square will be is equal to c square by s square plus 1 okay? that is y will be is equal to square root of s square plus 1. So, this can be written as, so y as a function of s will be is equal to 1 by that is c by, c by square root of s square plus 1. So, I got y. Now, take inverse Laplace transformation, taking inverse Laplace transformation, taking inverse Laplace transformation. So, let us take the inverse Laplace transformation. If I take the inverse Laplace transformation, so inverse Laplace transformation of y of s will be is equal to capital Y of t. So now see here, now see here, now see here, inverse Laplace transformation I am getting as a finally y of t. So y of t will be is equal to c anyway constant you can pull out. Inverse Laplace transformation of 1 by square root of s square plus 1. Did you recognize this? This is the Bessel function of 0 0th order. So, what is that formula Bessel function of 0 0th order? We are knowing, we know, we know inverse Laplace transformation of inverse Laplace transformation of 1 by s square plus a square will be is equal to so j naught a t. So, but in place of a square we have 1, that is why y of t will be is equal to j naught into, of course c is there, c into j naught into, c into j naught into t. This will be the answer of given. So, what is the final conclusion, what is the final answer will be? <coughs> the final answer will be is, c multiplied by j naught into t. But that c is an integration constant that we need to eliminate. That how to eliminate that? By using the boundary condition. What is that boundary condition? y of 0 is given as 1. y of 0 is given as 1. So, now substitute that y of 0 here. So, in place of t you substitute 0. Then c, so this is y of 0 as 1. c into j of 0 j of 0 into 0, but j of 0 of 0 is, j of 0 of 0 is 1. So, then I will get the c is 1. So, that I will take here, that I will take here. At the top, I am erasing the problem and I am writing here. So, if I take that boundary condition, given that, given that, y of 0 is equal to 1. So, y of 0 is equal to c into j 0 of 0. This is 1, 
this is c this is again 1 j of 0 bessel function of 0 at order 0 is 1 so that is c is 1 determined once c is 1 the complete solution is the solution of this differential equation will become solution will be y of t will be is equal to j not of t bessel function of zero at order so by looking this differential equation you come to know this is the bessel's differential equation of zero at order okay man already chesam kuda meer ee differential equation no so special functions meek evarkana idea unte so this will come as under special functions the bessel functions is a one kind of special functions that will be useful in many places in the physics as well as in engineering mechanics so finally we got the uh, like uh, the best way of solving the given differential equation by using the laplace transformations you go through this problem once again you will come to know the application of this laplace transformation so then ela apply chesam so ichinatuvante danni manamu so convert chesam first first order differential equation adi variable separable method leku vachesindi variable separable method leku vachin tarata we need to put some integration constant because it we need to solve then finally we will take the inverse laplace transformation because we don't want y of s we come back to the original space again so original space like vachestam so original space like ante this so then it is a known forms okay so i hope this problem clearly demonstrates you what is the exactly the application of inverse laplace transformations okay fine